Hi, this is a review of a classics illustrated Caesar's Conquests by Julius Caesar. Let's see what year this is. It's like 1954, 55, or 56. Let's see, you got your own library right here. This is, all right, 1956. All right, so, and I've never read the memoirs. I think mean, I tried once because I liked this comic book just because of the battle scenes. I mean, I was a kid. And then, whoo, you try to read it. Yeah, it's brutal. All right, so let's take a look inside. I'll try to keep the pace because sometimes on these comic book videos, they can go a little long. All right, so you got the map. I don't know how historically accurate that map is. And then, ugh, was this haircut? God, why? See, I'd hate, you know, it's got a uh, haircut. All right, and then, this is kind of interesting. Caesar wrote in the third person, he always referred to himself as he or Caesar. I remember in 1996, Bob Dole, who was the Republican ran against Bill, he used to talk about himself in the third person. People thought he was crazy. You know, he could have said, well, Julius Caesar did it. No one thought he, well, okay. People, I guess, did think that Julius Caesar was crazy. Now, I'm not going to go over the plots. Basically, when he was, uh, what did it say here? I'm going to go back a little bit. I'm sorry. I should have, because he's, where is it? He was appointed governor of two Roman provinces bordering Gaul. And so he decides to conquer all of Gaul. And the conflict starts. I'm not going to do play by play on everything, but you got a tribe who needs more territory and they're migrating, burn their own villages so they don't have a choice. They can't turn back. And then, you know, so I think, I think that the problem, only the Romans are allowed to expand territory. You don't want other tribes to do it. And I remember thinking as a kid, I was kind of like rooting for Rome. <laughs> as I was a kid, all right? Let me on. But um, it's basically just a series of uprisings as Rome spreads its territory, different tribes rise against them. You know, it's, 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 I think there's only one time where they take a serious loss towards the middle. I oh, like that though. See, that really has to just, just chap those, those Germanic tribes. You know, it's bad enough that we outnumber these Roman armies 10 to 1. You know, it's, it's bad enough that we have to pay taxes and tribute. It's bad enough that they enslave our sons and they rape our wives and daughters. But what really gets me the most is that we lost to a guy with this haircut. Ugh. Give him a better haircut. Even in Rome. I don't know. I'm trying to remember. In that Rome, did he have a haircut like that? And uh, I just remember he was, he was uh, awesome in the miniseries Rome. Now, if you watch Game of Thrones and you got really ticked off the last few seasons, then... I'd suggest the miniseries Rome. It's only two seasons long. It's great. Take courage. Remember your honor, soldiers of Rome. He does have a couple of decent speeches in here. I think I just blew past a couple of them. And then, you know what? The, this is making a Julius Caesar comic book. That's actually not a bad idea. I mean, he's a public figure. He's public domain public domain character, you can pretty much take him and do what you want with him. I mean, you see a bunch of, uh, come on, you see a bunch of uh, public domain characters now being overused. Like Sherlock Holmes is really overused right now. Uh, who else? Three Musketeers, you see a bunch of Three Musketeers movies. But you take Julius Caesar. Oh yeah, this is where, I think this is where the rope, because what had happened was uh, there was a year the really bad harvest so they had to uh, split the troops up amongst some of the tribes of Gaul and so they used that as a good opportunity to up to, to rebel and Caesar can't be everywhere and I think he had to go back at some point this is the big siege <laughs> he's running with the note right there and then what they say the notes stuck there for two days what man that's the problem. You don't know how historically accurate all this is. 
But that's cell phone footage. I can't even trust the news because they just chop up an event, a two hour event into five seconds. You gotta watch the whole event to see what really happened. So what really happened here, we don't know. We're getting Julius Caesar's account, but I mean, we don't really know how much true. All these guys could have actually been starving and not really a big army. Okay, this is the final conflict right here. That's the king. The, the, where is it? Like I said, I'm sorry about blowing through all this, but otherwise it takes too long. But you can kind of get the, so the Gauls, I don't even know how to say his name. I can read it. Ver, ver, yeah, I'm not even going to try. That's a good thing about Julius Caesar. This is an easy name to pronounce. And then, this is the final. And again, here we go. I don't know how, how accurate that is. All the tribes are united. One push against ah, the haircut. He's still. Oh. And they do build this up. At least they make him look strong. And then we have the final battle. The final push. Yeah, I think I see Titus Polo and, and Lucius Verinus in there. And then... But they don't really talk much about strategy in the comic book. And I guess uh, the memoir would do a little bit more of that. And then he says, was make amends to Caesar as you th think best. Surrender, be alive to him. And then that doesn't, poor guy. I know he doesn't. Yeah, they, they don't show what happens to him. It's just, uh, there he was executed. And then with the crushing feet. And so we end there. And then this is kind of cool because you get a little bit of a history lesson with Julius Caesar. It does talk about about when he uh, appointed himself the unchallenged ruler of Rome. He was stabbed 23 times. Alright, so they talk about all that. And then you get one last thing. They have a little serial going here at the end. Story of Great Britain, part four. Now, I've got a bunch of these. I don't know if I have all these in order. I might have to put these together sometime. So this is probably a sanitized history. The fourth of 12 features the history of Great Britain. Hmm, okay. I'm, oops, sorry about my finger. I might have to see if I have the other. The other one. Then you have the Roman army. And I might have to read that again. See how accurate this is. I don't know. That's cool. And then you got Classics Illustrated Junior. And look at some of the other titles. Wizard of Oz already? What was that? I just saw. Oh, this is 1956. I guess it was a classic by then because that was early 1900s. What is classic? You got to make a generation, make it through a generation. So would Harry Potter. Be a classic right now. If that was 1997, it's been at least a generation. And then there you go. Now, I've never, I I think I have this one, but I've never read it. And it's a Jules Verne. So there's some things I need to take a look at again. I don't know if I mentioned this, but these originally belonged to my dad. And so on Days of New Electricity, it was out. Summer Days, great. Just sneak into the cabinet and grab a couple classic comics. All right, well, that's it. I know I had to blow through this real quick. There's, if not, these videos can get bogged down. But you get an idea of what this, this uh, comic book's like. Uh, a little bit of, I don't know how, how accurate it would be for a history lesson, except for the comic book itself. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, there's a lot more uh, old comic book reviews and a few classics illustrated. Please uh, hit like, subscribe if you want. I also have a blog called Dysfunctional Literacy. I don't do comic books there, but I do talk about literature. I put some of my own writing up there. All right. Hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.